Hello, Seab Nation. It's your boy, Tom. Might be going a little bit insane after recording about 14 videos in a row. But today, we're going to be talking about Python and how to turn it into an executable. So why would you want to do this? Well, let's say you write a script in Python. You obviously have Python installed on your computer, I would hope. Um, maybe you're going to share it with a friend or at work with 50 to 100 other coworkers. You don't want to have to sit there and install Python on every single person's computer. That's a huge time waster. So we're just going to turn it into an executable. Then all you have to do is mail it to them, put it on a USB, whatever you want to do, and share it with them. Uh, something you need to know probably is that executables usually can't be sent as just an executable through like Outlook or something. You do need to convert it into a zip file. If you try to send an executable, it's most likely going to get blocked and never get delivered. So just a word of advice on there. If you're going to be sending it out to people through email, just make sure you turn it into an executable. Uh, but if you use like Google Drive or something, you should be fine. I've done executable shares that way. So yeah, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to open command prompt. You can just push the start. Uh, key and type in cmd. We're going to get our command prompt there. And I'm going to link all this stuff in the description below and copy and paste the code down there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install pyinstaller. So we're just going to do the command pip space install space py installer. So I'm just going to copy and paste that over. Keep it simple. Press enter. So I already have this installed actually, so I'm not going to do that. But here is a picture I took. So you can see up there I typed in pip installer, or uh, yeah, pi, pip installer, pi installer, sorry. And it just kind of shows you what it's doing. It can take a few seconds. These are loading bars that I'll click up as it goes through. And then when it's done, well, it says done. And you know that you're good to go. So let's open a fresh command prompt there. Now, my script I'm using is going to be on my desktop. So I'm going to do cd desktop. And that's just going to be targeting my desktop. Obviously, if your script's somewhere else, just you know change that up to however you need it to target the correct spot. So now we're going to actually use that Pi installer that we just got. So we're going to use Pi installer minus sign minus sign one file because we just want one single executable file, and you know, it's going to load up all the modules and everything into that executable, and then the name of your script. So I'm just using a script from one of my previous videos, which is just py hotkey.py. Obviously, I don't have a file path here because I'm already targeting my desktop in command prompt. I'm going to just copy and paste that over. I'm going to push enter. It can sometimes take a few seconds to start. That one was pretty fast. And uh, it just kind of went through everything. It's done. Um, that was actually pretty fast. Usually it takes a little while, but it'll tell you when it is done. Alrighty. So here's what it spits out. We got a few different files here. We got our build, has a few things in there, you know, like a library, some other stuff that we might need for uh, something else we're gonna show you a little bit later on. But our main thing we're gonna be looking at here is the DIST folder. I enlarged the icon a little bit better to see it, but it's kind of blurry. But it's basically a floppy disk with a little yellow snake coming off of it. And so that's our executable. We can double click on it. It's gonna run. And in this script, all I did was press the hotkey S and it just wrote, uh, print it, do something. So that is our executable. We can turn it into a zip file. If you can send it as an executable, go ahead and do that and you're good to go. Now, the next thing we wanna look at is maybe you wanna set up a like an installer for this. This is really cool. You know, if you're fine with just ending at this step, you know, that's fine, go ahead. But if you wanna kinda of get a little bit more fancy, definitely watch the second half of this video. So I will have this in the description below, but we're gonna jump over to this website, juniorsoftware.org, pretty cool thing. You're gonna scroll down till you see this file name here. It's the first one. It's uh, the Eno setup, uh, currently as shooting this video, version 6.2. And you can just click random site, US or Netherlands. And it will download, install it. I've already done all that. It should be something you pretty much know how to do. And we're gonna go ahead and launch that. 
And here's what we get. Let me make sure that's in frame. So we're going to push new. And this is going to be our wizard that really kind of helps us along step by step. So we're going to push new. Now, what is our application actually going to be called? So I'm going to call it tab nation demo. Why not? What is your application version? Well, this is on my first version, so we're just going to put 1.0.0. Why not keep it consistent in case we ever use that third one later on? Application publisher. Well, we're just going to say it's tab nation. I totally own my own company right now. Um, and then your website, uh, which is just going to be tabnationcoding.com, which that is actually a real website if you want to check it out. We're going to push next. And then we got the application destination base folder. And that's basically when they run the install, where is it going to go? What's its destination? So, you know, you can just put it into the programs file folder if you want, or you can just pick custom and then put your custom thing there. We'll do programs files folder for now. Keep it simple because that's probably where you're going to want to put it anyway. Uh, what is the folder name going to be? We're just going to call it tab nation demo and then allow users to change the application folder if they want. I do definitely recommend doing that. That way, if they don't want it where you said, put it somewhere else. Maybe they want it on their desktop or something. That's perfectly fine. We're now going to put uh, next application main executable file. So where is my actual executable file? We're going to hit browse. It is on my desktop. And we're going to find that, which was called, where are we? Oh, that's right. It's in a folder, the DIST folder. There it is, Pi Hockey. So we're going to click on that. You got some options here. Allow user to start the application after setup has finished. That basically means when they get to the end, there's that finish button. They can have a little checkbox that says like launch now versus them having to double click. We're going to go ahead and add that just so you can see what it looks like. The, uh, the application doesn't have a main executable file. Well, we do, so we're good. And then other application files, uh, what we want to do there. Apparently, I can't move that. That's a problem. Yeah, right there we go. We're going to create a just a demo file. And we're basically just going to kind of put uh, the build in there. I created a icon an ICO. I'm going to put that in there too. And I think, I'm not sure if you have to put that in there or that. I'm not really sure. We'll put them in there. Let's see what happens. So we're going to add files or sorry, we're going to add folder because I put everything in the folder to make it easy. I called it the demo folder. That's good. Yes. So there's our folder. We're going to push next. Associate a file type to the main executable. We're just going to leave that alone. We're good there. Go ahead and push next. Create a shortcut to the main executable in the start program files. Uh, for the sake of this video, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to say no. And then uh, we're going to have this, you know, a few options here that you can read through. You know, allow a user to change the startup menu folder, that kind of stuff, giving them more flexibility. I, I always recommend doing it. Uh, unless you're really giving it to users that have no clue what they're doing, then maybe you want to be a little bit more in control. Now, if your program has a license file, you can add it here. I do not have that, but if you do, you can definitely do that. That's, you know, if you're going to be doing like some type of paid program that you're going to be advertising, handing out, that's something you're definitely going to want to look at. Information file shown before installation. You know, it's kind of like, a, hey, before you install, know this or that kind of thing. You want them to see some information before they install or something. Information file shown after installing. So same thing as up here, but it shows you after versus thing. Maybe you have the help document pop up or, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe it goes to like a website or something. There's a lot of stuff you can do really right there, but we're going to leave them all blank. Go ahead, push next. Now, how do we want this to install? For the most part, most programs usually come with the first one here, which is an administrator stall, meaning it will install it to all users that are on that computer. Uh, you can obviously change it so maybe it only installs to that one person's uh, personal account. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word there. Next, 
what language are you going to be doing? Uh, you know, you can add multiple languages if you want. Uh, I'm just going to keep it as English. You know, if this is something you're really going to be selling and plan to have kind of hopefully all around the world, then you may want to push select all and just have them all in there. You know, it's not going to make the executable that much bigger. Might as well sometimes, but we'll just stick with English. We're good. All right, custom compiler output folder. We're good. Pretty much we're going to leave all this blank except for this icon file one. We want to change it. We don't want a Python one. So we're going to push browse. And we're going to desktop, and where did I put that again? Demo folder. There's my icon. If you don't know how to create an icon, just take a picture and Google icon or ICO icon converter. They're free to use, and they're pretty fast, pretty customizable. So that's all I did. I just took my logo there. I'm going to push OK. Got there. Do you want to have a password on there? Uh, you know, if this is a program that's really being used inside your computer, or uh, sorry, your company, Maybe they're going to want to put a password on there just for security so that maybe some people who are downloading it that weren't supposed to be downloading it won't be able to install it. It's just kind of like an extra security feature. Um, I can really only see that ever being used if it's in like a work environment and you only need certain people to be allowed to use it and install it. Go ahead. Next. Obviously, don't forget your password because once you enter it in there, you're it's kind of hard to recover. <laughs> So we're good here. We're going to push next. Basically, we got to the end. We're going to push finish. We're going to see, uh, would you like to compile the new script now? Uh, obviously, I'm going to probably say yes because I'm doing that. Would you like to save the script before compiling? It's probably a smart thing to do. File name, we'll just call it backup. And that's going to save as a .iss file, which is an ion setup script file. We're going to push save. And as you see down here, we got a few things going on. And depending on the size of your script, it depends how long it's going to take, obviously. My script's only like 30 lines of code, so that was super crazy fast. So we're good to go there. So as you see right there, it's going to say finish. It's going to tell you, hey, it took about 8 seconds, almost 7 seconds there. It's telling me if for some odd reason you want to know that information already. So we are done in this program. Alrighty. And so now that that's done, let's go find it. It should be in that demo folder that I created, and it's going to be a new folder in there called Output. So we're going to go in there, and boom, there is my setup. Let's go ahead and throw that on my desktop. Uh, okay, maybe not, since that is kind of hard to see with a black icon on a black background. We'll just call that new folder. Throw that in there. There we go. There you go. So it got my setup. Uh, Tab Nation has my logo there, so I'm going to go ahead and this is my installer. You might want to actually, instead of saying my setup, you might also want to include like the word installer there too, just because it's more common to know what that means. So we're going to push that. You're probably going to get a little warning, you know, or do you trust this person? I usually trust myself, so yeah. So here we go. This is basically our installer. It's really cool. It's going to have all the stuff that we want it to do. Um, so I remember it here's where its default path is going to install. I did allow them to browse so that I made it so that they can change it if they want to. That's fine. We'll push next. Uh, it's also right here going to tell you how big it is. So it's just under 20 megabytes. Uh, yeah, it's 36 megabyte or 36 lines of code came out to 20 megabytes. It can get pretty large pretty quick. We're going to push next. And it's just going to ask you all the different questions of what you want. Do you want to create a desktop shortcut? Sure next you know here it is and then we're going to push install which i'm not going to do because i have no reason to because if you push cancel then it's going to say are you sure yes and they can always pick it up later if they don't feel like installing it in the moment all right guys hope this was very useful for you and it's going to save you a lot of time if you have any questions about what i just covered definitely hit me in the comments below if you have any ideas on how maybe to expand on this, uh, want to dive a little deeper into it, definitely let me know that also, and I'll see what I can do for you guys. I will see you all on the next one. Bye.